Good morning, welcome to our channel, Naughty Life. My name is Alex, my wife Jill and I make fishing, boating, lifestyle videos, everything to do on and off the water here in the Southwest Florida area. And today we are doing a full in-depth walkthrough and overview of our 2022 Tidewater 2700 Carolina Bay. Now we had put a couple of clips in one of our first videos on the boat, just as a quick walkthrough, but now we're gonna go through, we're gonna show you all the different compartments uh, we're going to show you everything that we've added to the boat i'm going to walk through everything that was uh, a standard option and something that we upgraded we're going to give shout outs to all the people here in the fort myers area that helped us complete this boat project and uh, we hope that you enjoy if you're a returning subscriber it's great to see you hope you're having a great day if you're new here go ahead take a second like the video comment and give us a subscribe it really helps the channel out a lot it's totally free for you to do and it takes about two seconds go 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 ahead Click that subscribe button down here at the bottom and we're going to go ahead and get into it. Now before we actually start doing a full walkthrough, well before we start going through uh, the full walkthrough, just trying to get some specs out of the way. So this again is a 2022 Tidewater 2700. It has a centerline measurement uh, of just over 27 feet. Now when you put the jack plate on and the engines, uh, you're just over uh, 30 feet length overall. Uh, in terms of beam, this particular bay boat has a nine foot, four inch beam, which for a 27 foot boat is already incredible. And for a bay boat, I mean, that's just, uh, you know, leading the class. It's a very wide feeling, large feeling boat for 27 feet. It's a super dry ride. It's a super comfortable ride, even in, you know, rougher conditions. And so we've been really pleased with it. It's got the Carolina Flare, which Tidewater is known for. And that really helps uh, to knock the water when there's spray back uh, and away from the boat to give you a really dry ride. In terms of fuel capacity, it is a 141 gallon fuel tank. Uh, we've got two live wells on here, which we'll talk about in detail in a few minutes. Uh, and in terms of weight, Tidewater has it listed at about 4,100 pounds. But with fuel, we have a 10 gallon freshwater tank, gear and people, you're sitting around that 6,000 pound mark, which is great because you can still tow this boat with a standard 1500 size pickup truck. Now we don't personally tow, we keep it dry, uh, dry stored at a marina here in Fort Myers. Uh, but if you were looking to, uh, if you do have to tow it, you're able to do it, you don't have to upgrade your truck. So that's definitely a plus. Uh, in terms of max horsepower rating, it's got a max horsepower rating of 600 horsepower. Uh, Tidewater's website shows that it has uh, a 21 inch draft, which they've just recently updated from 2022 to 2023. Uh, the 2022 said 18 inches. Honestly, if you, you know, even if you have a single engine, you're not really getting this thing into uh, less than two feet of water, which is, is plenty fine. I mean, you can get into two feet of water, have a blast, uh, as well as, you know, get into those shallow areas up on the sandbar and up into the beaches. So uh, I'd say conservatively, you know, plan on at least 24 inches, especially if you go with the twins. Uh, it's just gonna, you know, keep your expectations on par with what you can actually expect. Unless you jack the jack plate all the way up, tilt the motors up and you're just trolling, uh, you're not getting under two feet. But again, that's perfectly fine because this boat is super capable. You can do basically everything with it. You'll see that uh, as we go through it, we've got a lot of creature comforts like front bow seating, uh, a portable potty inside the console compartment. It can go you know, offshore on calm days as far as you want. Even on rough days, you can get out there. You can go inshore, you can go to the beach. You can do just about anything with this boat. And that's part of the reason why we wanted to go for it. So without further ado, I'm done rambling about the specs. Let's go ahead and start walking through. We're gonna start up here at the bow and we're gonna get you inside all these compartments, tell you all the things we like and dislike about this boat. And so that we can hopefully uh, help educate you on your decision if you're looking at this particular model for uh, you know, maybe a used one or looking into 2023. Starting up here at the bow of the boat, as you can already see from this video versus the last one, we've got this awesome teak style sea decking. Shout out to Fresh Decks here in Fort Myers. I'll drop their website information below. Uh, that was one of the first things we wanted to do with the boat was get it fully covered in this marine mat sea decking. Now this is the nine millimeter uh, sea deck. It gives us the option to get three different colors. So we went with uh, 
saddle, a slate gray, and an espresso to kind of match the upholstery as well as the outside of the boat. So as you can see, coming up here to the bow, this is an absolutely enormous casting platform. You can see in some of our other videos, we had three people fishing up here super comfortably, tons of room to work. We've thrown the cast net from up here. Uh, just a really, really great use of space up here in the front. So bringing this in now here, as you can see, we've got a Minn Kota Tarova trolling motor. This is a 72 inch shaft, 115 pound thrust motor, which is the perfect size for this particular boat. If you're a fisherman, I highly recommend that you look at adding the Minn Kota to it. It helps you work all the mangrove lines. You can spot lock when you're on a near shore reef, as well as um, you know easily work from dock to dock. Makes fishing and working different spots super easy. If you come up here to the front, you can see we've got an anchor locker, which we'll go ahead and open for you now. Now, windless is standard on this 2700, which if you've looked into bay boats at all, you'll know that uh, that's a, a pretty awesome option to have as standard. We don't use it very frequently because we do have power poles, which we'll show you later on here. However, it's great to have that windless anchor. If you're you know, hitting that bridge over there, if you can see it, we like to anchor up current. Great to have that as well as you know when we're going to the beach. So windless is standard on this boat. As you can see, we've got flush mounted pop-up cleats, which again is great for this big casting platform because you don't want the cast net or your fishing lines to get snagged on that. Moving backwards here towards the back of the casting platform, we have this huge storage compartment. As you can see, there is room for a five gallon bucket here with a drain in the bottom. We've got our PFDs as well as our safety kit, some snorkeling gear, just an absolutely huge compartment here in the front of this boat. That's what's really great about this particular bay boat. Um, there's really nothing in terms of uh, want for storage. You've got a lot of great storage compartments and from what we've seen so far they tend to stay fairly dry which is awesome because you know you want to keep stuff as dry as possible when you're on the boat now moving backwards to the seating section this was really one of the main selling points especially for a bay boat in this class this bow seating is extremely comfortable so taking the family to the sandbar is super easy let's see if i can get a, a clip here so I'm six foot even on a good day, and I can sit here very comfortably. You can fit three people up here, no problem at all. You've also got this really, really nice forward lounger, which again, can fit two adults comfortably. This is actually my favorite spot in the boat. It is such a comfortable lounger, which is insane. Again, if you're looking at boats in the 27 foot category, especially a bay boat, typically this front seating is either just this one back piece or it's a cooler that you're sitting on. So this is such an awesome thing to have on a 27 foot bay boat. And what we're gonna show you here in a second, like I mentioned, this boat is at home at the sandbar at the beach with the family but it is extremely fishable and we're going to go ahead and show you how it converts really quickly here into a fishing boat just like that it is now ready to be fished by removing the back headrests you not only get two additional rod holders on either side but you've got really awesome access to get up and down from this casting platform it is just a very, very versatile style boat. It takes no time to convert it back, put these cushions back on a snap, drop in those headrests, pick up the family and go out to dinner or to the sandbar for the day. The other awesome thing is the front part of this lounger seat, which you can get a better idea of the size here now, is a 10 gallon insulated live well, which if you've got six or eight people fishing on this boat, I mean, you can have three up here with plenty of pinfish or shrimp in this front live well, so you're not having to fight uh, the back aquarium live well, which we'll show you in just a little bit. The last piece I wanna mention uh, in the front bow of this 2700 is 
uh, the storage capacity. Again, I talked about the in-deck uh, storage on the casting platform, but underneath this lounger, you have storage here. This is also an insulated cooler if you want to store some drinks in here. Underneath both of these seats, you've got compartments, lockable rod storage. It'll hold four rods on either side. Both of these compartments are on a gas-assisted strut, and they stay fairly dry, as you can see. In this front hatch here, it is also insulated, so you can use it as a fish box. Uh, we just like to put our fenders as well as some uh, additional ropes for when we're at the dock. And then again on this side, you've got lockable rod storage with a compartment with a gas assisted strut, which is really awesome. Super easy to get in and out of everything. We've got lots of cup holders, rod holders all over this boat. Again, you can take this to the sandbar. You can fish this boat. It's absolutely epic. We quickly put those cushions back in. Again, just a couple of minutes and this thing's ready for the sandbar. Moving down the starboard side, uh, you can see here we've got a, a USB port here. Again, just an awesome little uh, creature comforts for the family. We have got one of our speakers. I'll drop the information here on the screen. I don't remember if... Um, Tidewater includes a base stereo system uh, as a standard option, but we went ahead and upgraded the stereo. We've got a speaker on the port and starboard in the bolster. We've got two in the front, two up in the leaning post there, which we'll show you as we move back towards the aft. On the starboard side of the console, we've got a freshwater shower. This was an option that we added uh, with a 10 gallon freshwater tank. Here's our 10 inch subwoofer. And right here is our plug-in for our three bank charger for the trolling motor, which we'll show you now as we move to the other side of the console. Port side of the console, we have our access door to inside. As you can see for a bay boat, this is a pretty large compartment. We've got our fresh water pump down there, our three trolling motor batteries. In the back there, you've got your three bank charger, the back of the sub, and we do have a porta potty in here as well. One thing, and this has nothing to do with Tidewater, but Fet Ford, this particular porta potty is absolute garbage. It has leaked from day one. Now, thankfully, it's not the holding reservoir that's leaking. Uh, it is the fill tank where you actually put the water in the solution to clean the inside of the toilet when you're done with it, but. Uh, it's very poorly designed. The vent cap, which is also the fill cap, has no seal. So as soon as it starts shaking around, it's leaking all over the place. Again, not a Tidewater issue, but if you're looking to get this boat and this is what they send with it, tell them to take it back because we're already looking just two months into having this boat at, at replacing that. Now I'm gonna climb down in here. Again, I'm six foot. It's not super comfortable, not super you know, convenient to get into, but as you can see, I can sit down in here fairly comfortably. You know, wouldn't want to be in here for an extended period of time. But if I had to get out of the elements for a little bit, I've got enough room in here uh, to need, you know, if I've got to be in here, I could probably change uh, no problem. So again, great console space for a 27 you know, foot bay boat. The other thing that Tidewater started doing, I believe after 2020 model, is they actually started enclosing all of their electronics behind a panel. So again, this is a production style boat. You know, there's you know few things fit and finish wise, like some exposed wires that are to be desired, but for the price point and for the amenities that you're getting that are standard, it's really, really tough to beat. You know, we were, we were on a ton of different boats in the same, in the same class. And one of the things that we really liked especially for a 27 foot bay boat was the bow seating and that the seating was actually, you know, recessed into the deck. A lot of more expensive boats that are in the 26 to 28 foot class, uh, the bow seating was flush with the casting platform, which if you've got children or, you know, people that aren't really familiar with being on a boat, 
it's really scary. I would never have anyone sitting up here in the front, you know, really ever at all, especially running at speed. So that's what we really liked about this boat is that the, the bow seating was true bow seating. It wasn't just kind of an afterthought. This is a really, really awesome, again, entertaining space for uh, entry level style of boat. So that was just one other thing that we wanted to mention. Again, production boat, fit and finish, a little bit of things to be desired, but for what it is, it's an awesome, awesome boat. Let's go ahead now and move to the helm area. So starting here at the top, sorry if it's a little bit dark, uh, you've got your switches for your aft and forward spreader lights, as well as your cur courtesy lights here in the T-top. These are all standard options. You've got, hey, what's up, pal? We got a little bird joining the, the tour. You wanna to talk about the trolling motor there, Gary? Uh, anyways, you've got lockable electronic box here. We've just got some, sorry. We've just got some stuff charging up here, some GoPro batteries. Obviously you've got your nice half windshield, which is great if you need to duck down and get out of the elements, as well as nice uh, open top to feel the wind in your face and get some ventilation on those hot days. You've got a padded area with your compass to store some of your knickknacks. In terms of electronics, uh, they don't include anything standard, but there's a few different options that you can go with. I gotta get the bird out of here because it's freaking me out a little bit. Get, 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 get. Sorry about that. So in terms of uh, electronics, we went ahead and outfitted this with twin 12 inch Garmin GPS map XSVs, I believe if that's incorrect, I'll drop that down below. We've got a uh, Airmar, chirp transducer for our bottom screen uh, moving to the center here you got your yamaha cl5 gauge which gives you all the information on your engines uh, we've got the jl audio media master mm50 uh, for our stereo system two cup holders continuing down you've got your stainless steel steering wheel with power knob you've got your control for your bob's marine uh, hydraulic jack plate which is a standard option Another standard option is this wireless uh, phone charger here on the dash. Continuing starboard, you've got your Lenco trim tabs, also standard option. Your control for your windlass, standard option. Moving starboard further, you've got your uh, Yamaha digital controllers uh, for your motors. You've got your jack plate gauge to tell you where your jack plate is. Uh, we went with power pole, so this is your power pole switch as well as a lanyard that you can use uh, you've got your ignition your kill switch your port and starboard uh, ignition buttons and then your uh, switch panel for everything else uh, that you're going to need for uh, your bilge your freshwater wash down raw water wash down all that type of good stuff you can see here you've got multiple positions to put your feet a nice little compartment here as well as some mesh compartments down here at the bottom just a really nice layout super functional really well designed helm station here on the tidewater 2700 so now let's talk about the captain's chairs and the uh, deluxe leaning post so i'll give you a quick kind of look around of this try to get out of the wind here this is an awesome awesome feature of this 2700 boat as you can see uh, you've got fold down armrests on either side you've got bolsters that move to several different positions depending on how you want to ride on this boat very very comfortable storage compartments on either side great for sunscreen a lockable compartment here for keys wallets whatever you need to and then a really nice sturdy footrest here to wrap up the seating section here on this 2700 really 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 nice couldn't be happier with it super comfortable uh, for for long rides whether you're sitting standing really 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 nice uh, really pleased with with how Tidewater did this moving down the port side on this leaning post you've got your plug-in for a three bank charger for the cranking batteries as well as your house battery that's all in this compartment here on the side uh, the only downside that i can uh say on this battery compartment is it's tough to get into if i need to do some kind of maintenance on my starboard 
uh, cranking battery, I'd have to literally undo and pull out every single other thing. The other thing, uh, when this boat came, the live well here, which we've got, again, this really beautiful 30 gallon aquarium live well, the top of it was not sealed. Uh, I don't know if they were just trying to rush boats off the boat. It's uh, from what I've heard, something that's happened on several others, not just ours, but there was actually water uh, splashing from the live well into and onto the battery compartment. So Tidewater, I might wanna uh, take a look at that and do a better job of sealing the top of the, um, uh, sealing the top of the live well. Shout out to Ryko Marine, our dealer. Uh, they went ahead, they uh, went and backfilled it as well as caulked it for us. We have not had any issues since they took care of that. So thank you guys. If you guys are in the Fort Myers area looking for a boat, go check out Ryko Marine. We're gonna link their information down below. Ryan, uh, one of the owners, Jeff, who was our salesperson, uh, Andy in the service department has been uh, fantastic since we took delivery of the boat. Uh, and that's one thing to mention, you know, I've, I've talked about a couple of gripes here already, uh, but Tidewater and Ryko Marine has both been awesome in getting those corrected. So find yourself a good dealer. If you like the Tidewater, they'll take care of you. And Tidewater has, has done a good job so far with little warranty stuff. Uh, so can't complain there. So again, we've got battery compartment and live well here in the leaning post. Moving uh, up towards the top of the T-top, you've got a four rod holder rocket launcher here on the back you've got another four rod holder launcher up at the top your aft spreader lights which are standard and then your jl audio system here uh, your two speakers in the t-top so moving to the starboard side of this tackle station you've got a couple of cup holders a nice little uh, bait prep and tackle tying station and then you've got this great little onboard tackle storage. You got some drawer storage here, several of the Plano tackle boxes that go in here. Not a ton of space and sorry it's a little bit dirty. We just basically keep essentials on here. So a few things for live bait fishing, a couple of paddle tails, some top waters, just uh, a couple of emergency lures uh, that can get us, get the job done should we decide we want to take a break from the sandbar and fish. Moving around to the starboard side, you can see we've got this really nice access to our battery switches behind this acrylic cover, which is really well designed. Uh, it's nice that you don't have to reach down into any hatches, uh, but Tidewater, again, if you're watching this, I think a better idea would be to take the switch panel, put it to the front of the console, and then maybe add another door here for access to the other side of the battery compartment. Again, I'm not an engineer, not an electrician, not a boat builder, but I think it's a good idea. It'll allow you to have, you know, again, easy access to your switches, but the convenience of being able to work on both sides of the battery compartment. Again, things to be desired. You know, there's some boats that have all three of those batteries on a rollout uh, tray. So, you know, maybe just think about putting another door there. Now we'll take a quick look at the port side. You've got your gas fill, another pop-up cleat, a rod holder. Underneath, you've got under gunnel rod storage. We added in another rod holder here, nice cup holder and handle. As well as on your port side, you have your raw, raw water wash down. On your starboard side, again, you have your USB additional under gunnel rod storage. You've got your fresh water fill, pop-up cleats, rod holders, and cup holders that go all the way now and down to the back. Lastly, let's go ahead and take a look at how much space is on this bay boat in this back area. This is an absolutely enormous aft of a bay boat. Plenty of room for activities. You got your two stainless drains there that are recessed so there is an actual um, lip here which you don't often see on a bay boat so that does a way better job of keeping water out of this back area you can see you've got plenty of rear fishing area multiple rod holders 
cup holders, really clean install of the engines because everything is digital. So you know, not a whole lot of crazy wires running around everywhere. We've got dual swim platforms on either side. These each have, it's gonna be tough to see, there is a collapsible boarding ladder on either side. And then as you can see here, this whole time, we've got dual 10 foot power poles that are holding us in place in, you know, about a foot and a half, two foot, little windy, rocky sea here. So uh, if you're a fisherman, Highly, highly recommend getting yourself a trolling motor as well as a power pole. Shout out to Captain Ken Mercer. I'll drop his channel below. He's a local fishing guide here in uh, the Southwest Florida area. Uh, we initially weren't going to put power poles on this boat. And I will tell you, I would be kicking myself if we didn't. So Ken, I appreciate it. Absolutely love the power poles. They have been uh, nothing but workhorses for us. So highly recommend it on any type of boat if you're doing any type of fishing. Now what we're going to do really quick is I'm going to pop up probably some of the best aft seating you'll ever see in a bay boat in this class. Check it out. So you've got room to seat four people super comfortably. These are some of the most comfortable spots to ride on the boat. You can see the backrest again I'm six foot. Comes up super high. Helps to keep the splash down for when you're coming off plane or for when those power poles are, are hitting some water on uh, on low speeds. Again, just a really, really comfortable spot to lounge, hang out while you're on the boat. What's really great too, is we've had, you know, several occasions where we'll put a cooler down in this spot and use it as uh, a table. So, you know, you, there's not a table on this particular boat, but you can very easily put, uh, you know, cooler back here and and turn it into a little dining area if you wanted to lastly here on the aft underneath each of these seats you've got very generous storage we've got uh, some of our dry bait chum we've got some cleaning supplies that we keep here on the boat same thing on the port side this is where we'll usually keep our uh, our flip-flops and any knickknacks that we need a spot for while we're at speed we keep our wash down hose there. And then here in the center, you can see you've got this little tackle uh, storage compartment that lifts out and then gives you access down into your bilge compartment, which is fairly uh, decent size um, access into your bilge. You can do pretty much any of the work that you need to right from there. Last but not least, we've got the powerhouse of this boat. We decided to go with twin 300 Yamahas. Uh, we went back and forth. There's several different options. You can get a single engine uh, 425 XTO. However, with uh, maneuverability, reliability, again, resale value, we decided to go with two. Uh, if you know anything about boating, there's an old saying, one is none two is one so just like with the garments just like with the power poles just like with the engines we went with two for peace of mind maneuverability around the docks as well as resale value now we're not trying to get into a boat uh, to make any money uh, that's not what you do you t generally are always going to lose money um, but you always want to try to protect your investment as best as possible by outfitting it uh, at the highest possible way so that when it is time to sell it uh, you've got the ability to uh, you know, get as much back as you possibly can. In terms of payments and financing, uh, we can give a shout out to Center Councils only. If you guys don't follow them, I'll drop their page below. They do a ton of boat reviews. Uh, they also do real estate, which is cool because that's something that we're passionate about as well. And they also do boat financing. Uh, so they basically do all the heavy lifting, all the legwork with applying and reaching out to different lenders that they work with to help get that done for you. So shout out to uh, Brian Gonzalez over at uh, CCO Financing. We'll drop their information below. Uh, they helped us secure the loan for our particular boat and it was a super, super easy process. With that, we hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like these walkthroughs, let us know. We'd love to do more. If you're a boat dealer and you know, you've know you got some new boats on the ground that you'd like 
for someone to take a walk through, let us know. We'd love to do it. If you're just looking at getting into this boat or any boat, my suggestion to you would be hit as many boat shows as you can, immerse yourself in it, go and get on and open up every hatch and walk through every type of boat, whether it's a center console, a bow rider, uh, you know, an inboard engine, a cruiser, get on everything if you don't know where to start because then you can start to narrow in on what type of boat you like, figure out what features you like, then look at the brands. There's really no better way to do your research than to get on and just feel around and touch everything on, on the boat before you start to get into making the decision. Again, we hope that you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps us out a lot. Again, free for you to do. We're trying to reach more people and bring them along and share our journey. I appreciate you all tuning in. Life short, live naughty. We'll catch you in the next one.